Bert Troutman recently returned to Manchester City Football Club, the club for whom he made his name as a world-class footballer. The fans greeted him with a hero's welcome. But it's Bert's fans that love and remember him for more than his heroics on a football pitch. Bert has dedicated his life to help improve the relationship between two nations. I should imagine when he gets up to the pearly gates, which is closer to now than what he used to be, they'll be well pleased with him because they'll think he's put a lot back into life. He's had a lot out of life, but he's put a lot back into life. In terms of what he's done for the English and well, for the British and for the German people, uh, has been absolutely magnificent. Aged 82, Bert now lives in Spain. Despite recovering from a recent eye operation, it is clear to see this man's determination, as Bert has managed to use his own fascinating life story to educate and inspire so many people around the world. Well, whether it's fascinating or not, of course I had an exceptional life. Uh, if you are asked, and other people have been asked, many say, uh, I would do exactly the same. But I couldn't say I would do exactly the same because there was a war. I was a prisoner of war. Since the Second World War, there has been a clear rift between the English and German people. This hostility has continued to be loudly voiced by many English football fans who cannot forget the conflict. In 1949, Manchester City stunned the nation by signing an ex-prisoner of war to be their new goalkeeper. This news was greeted with great anger as 40,000 people took to the streets of Manchester to demonstrate against a German playing for their football club. He got a whole barrage of hate mail, very racist, again taunting his nationality, calling him a Nazi, um, particularly vicious stuff. The the idea of a, a German who we just fought about in, in, in the wars coming and all the, the dads around where I lived were coming back from the war and they were saying, what's this a German playing for Manchester City? I couldn't ignore it, obviously not, but I concentrated more on uh, more important things in life, even though these letters of abuse are were important enough for the different aspects in life than just to concentrate on that. I think if I would have done that, yeah, it could have destroyed me, really. During his service, Bert was amazingly caught on four separate occasions. He somehow managed to escape from French, Russian and American forces until he literally fell into the hands of the British. As he came out of this farmhouse, it was very, it was a bright moonlight, and all he could see behind him was at least two huge DIs with their rifles, and the moon, he said, used sort of elongated the, the shadows to either side of him, and he just ran and ran and ran, expecting any minute for these guys to open fire. Eventually, he found this hedge which he jumped through, and on the other side was uh, English Tommy having a pee through the other side. Um, the famous words, hello Fritz, do you fancy a cup of tea? And that's the fourth and last time he was, he was captured. My education actually began in England, not in Germany, because when we were transported on trains or on lorries through certain villages or small towns. Of course you had people who gave the victory sign, people thumb down, then you could detect in their faces they felt sorry for us, especially many, many women, thinking they probably had a son themselves in the war or was a POW. And they looked at us and must have thought, Poor sod, a poor fella. I was just told in, in the changing room what a what a legend he is. I mean, uh, I knew about him breaking his neck in the, in the, in the FA Cup final a few years back, but um, 
I didn't realise his history before that, which is uh, quite remarkable. This side now, the camp was over there. Yeah, you know, that's away. Side. Just behind those fences now. That yeah. was the camp. And there all the football yeah, fields, the green fields. I met him first when we were still prisoners in Ashton and Makerfield. And we both got them up on the same day, went up to this agricultural camp in Westmoreland, and both came that volunteered for the bomb disposal. They were either always happy when the, when the job was finished, and we know we got away with it. We had our own team in the camp, and Bert was a goalkeeper at the time. I'm going back 1948, yeah. The major of, uh, you know, of the camp it was Scotsman, football, daft, and he opened the camp for English civilians to come in. We had four or five thousand people there on the Sunday when we played. We enjoyed it. This was very, very important to us. We were more intrigued by his being a prisoner of war than anything else until we saw him play, so he could play. Well, but there. <laughs> right, huh? It certainly is. <laughs> Long time no see It is, isn't that? Nice to see you. Eh? <laughs> nice My see. ball, Billy. Eh? <laughs> how long has it been? Is it oh, how long has it been, Billy? Were you there when, uh, when uh, his book was launched and they had some photographs taken? No, really. Because the, time the, well, the last time I saw you then was when, when, uh, when I played the town. That was yeah, in the 40s. Yeah. Well, the first time I've seen Bert was the uh, first match he played. That's six years ago, it was it. Mm. But he didn't want anybody in the... Anything in the year, Bert had it. So, so brilliant with the town, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. I was only in, in St Helens town for a year and four months. They had an average gate from, of 250. When I finished, they had an average gate of 6,000. This is the amazing part of my, you know, beginning of my footballing career. I know it might have been different when it, with Manchester, but they really, really took to him. First of all, because of his football ability, because he, people would come primarily to see him. Working days was five days on Harvard Day Saturday. When Bird signed for Manchester City, the captain of the camp said wouldn't release him to play football because he got paid to 12 o'clock in camp. So there was big trouble about it in the, in the press and so on. And all of a sudden there was a message for the camp commander that Bert had to be relieved every Saturday to come from. He must have had friends, or somebody had friends higher up. When Bert signed for Manchester City, he had to win over much more than the club supporters, as his signing grabbed the attention of the whole nation. The press reaction, when the news was eventually released about, about Troutman joining, was absolutely amazing. It was the local papers, obviously, at first, and then the, the nationals on a local basis, and then the nationals. The number of reporters and, and uh, radio people that, that descended upon uh, Main Road was phenomenal. There was quite a big following of Jewish people, and, uh, well, to both clubs for that matter, but certainly to Manchester City. Uh, and there was a bit of a rife uh, between, like, you know, you, you, you're playing a German, like, how can you do that type of thing? When people went on the streets and uh, with banners and saying, if you do sign this German, we're going to boycott you as a club. I got one very good advice from Frank Swift, my predecessor, at the first game at Bolton. And Frank always had the attitude he called everybody my son. 
And he also came to me in the dressing room before the game and he said, Son, when you go out there now, there are 40 to 50,000 people outside there. When you go out there, get between the sticks, ignore them. What the board actually thought was that there would be an, a reaction for a couple of days and then everything would, would, uh, would calm down. Uh, and they hopelessly uh, misjudged that. The furore went on for weeks, it really did. It was, incredibly, a prominent rabbi who finally came to Bert's aid, when he made a public stand against the persecution that Bert received. The, the rabbi of Manchester, uh, Mr. Altman, said after the demonstrations of the, of, uh, the support supporters of, of Man City uh, said, you, how can you blame an individual for what happened during the war? Let him show us that he is a fair sportsman and appreciate the fact. There's an 18 year old in an FA Youth Cup final and uh, I got an awful lot of abuse. It was really the height of all the race hatred and Millwall was one of the stadiums where it seemed to be quite bad and uh, we played in front of about 12,000. So it was almost a challenge for me to try and win them over with my playing ability. It was perhaps even uh, worse for, for Bert Trauman because he was coming off the back of the war, the fact he was German. Um, there are different types of prejudices and uh, I th you know, I think that was possibly one of the worst which Bert Trautmann endured. I believe it's still a crowd record when I, you know, turned up for my first reserve game at Main Road. And uh, of course they were analysing me, you know, were sceptical about me. And it was up to me uh, to show I'm, I'm, I'm an ordinary man, I'm a normal person, I'm a sportsman, I like playing football. Now Liverpool try again. Jimmy Payne has the ball. He centres. But Bert Trotman clears. Trotman jumps and pulls the ball down. George Robb has a chance but loses it. For a moment it looks a good idea, but Trotman saves brilliantly. Eric Westwood was then captain and uh, he said there is no war in the dressing rooms. And I, I think he was uh, taking part in actions as well. So he knew what he was talking about. I think in the whole of my 15 years, I only had one incident with a certain player. He called me a few names during the game. Because of the abuse I had to take of him, I waited for the opportunity. And it came. He called me effing names. And I said, if you ever come near me, and I really hit him, if you ever come near me again, you're in hospital. I can promise you that. I think he was sent, was he sent off uh, one of the games? And it was towards the end of the, of the match, or, the, or he's, he'd taken his name. Uh, and as we were walking up, as we get to the tunnel and walking up like, he, he, got his, he got his cap and his gloves in his hand. And like, he went, the referee like, you've got no bloody chance. And, like, and he stuffed it straight in his face, you know. Uh -huh. When he took his name, if I remember rightly, he said, and what's your name like? And he said, Stanley Matthews. <laughs> oh, some bloody tales, I tell you. Oh. I started playing in the reserves when I was 16, and we used to have first team against the reserves, and they used to try and like do different formations and different skills and different, you know, attributes throughout the game. And it was, well, I mean, I had a great left foot shot, and the times I used to try and beat Bert, it was nearly impossible. You know, I used, to, I used to run down the track for half an hour if I'd scored against him. When you ask people like even Colin Bella, Fanny Lee or Dennis Law, you name them, well, you ask them, who taught you how to play? There was no bloody coaches in. And nobody told you anything. You, had, you learned it as you come along from a kid. In our day, we had no televisions. And all you had to do is go out and play with the ball. And every street, every town and city was a school of excellence. Uh, 
and he was, obviously, he was, well, if there's been any better keepers than him, I'd like to see him. Of course, you always had sections of the crowd which were still against Germans, still against because I was a German, who were chanting bloody jelly, this and uh, other words as well. Whether it was in Birmingham, whether it was in Wolverhampton, whether it was, you know, in all the first division clubs, you always found a section. I even found a section after 15 years playing, but they were individuals. Bert quickly cemented himself as a world-class goalkeeper and his remarkable performances made Manchester City a difficult team to beat, allowing the team to go on to glory. I think we were the only family in the row with a, with, actually with a tally, so everyone was crowded in, in the front, and it had this sort of very light blue tinge to it through this magnifier, so we all thought that was important, that, that uh, City would win. Uh, of course they didn't. I think once you've been there and experienced all this, you then you then feel more settled about the thing because there's nothing new anymore. You know, you're at Wembley and you, you know, and you've got a, a different sort of attitude, if you like. It's the cup final, the greatest match of them all. This year, a tale of two cities with white-shirted Birmingham hot favourites against Manchester, last year's runners-up. A hundred thousand people cheer the Queen as she enters Wembley's Royal Box to watch the season's crowning battle. Birmingham's inside left, Peter Murphy, starts an attack which sweeps to the Manchester goal mouth and straight into the arms of Bert Troutman, one of the world's greatest goalkeepers. I had this uh, infamous, I say, you know, broken neck because people ask me today, ah, or they say to me, I use a goalkeeper who broke his neck, you know, in 1956. Birmingham counter-attack desperately, but Bert Troutman pounces like a cat. But what's happened? Troutman's down. He's injured. Teammates help Troutman to his feet. He tells the trainer he's all right, but the crowd can see his neck is hurting badly. They say goalkeepers have got to be mad. Honestly, they've got to be daft up there to do what they do. I'm sure I'd dive at someone's feet when they're going to kick the ball. But he did it, you know. He saved the goal, he saved a, a, a situation where we, they could have scored. But he used to do that week in, week out. You know, and to play on when he's broke his neck, oh the hell, you know, no way. It was like a fog in front of my eyes. Everything was grey. I could only see the outside, you know, I could see people. There was no body in them, you know, like ghosts, so to speak. And I carried on playing. Not because I said so, uh, I just carried on. And that's time. Manchester supporters go mad with excitement, and no wonder. United hold the championship, and now City have the cup. A spectacular double magnificently earned. Now Roy Paul takes the precious cup from Her Majesty. Once again, the experts have been proved wrong, and splendid teamwork and just that extra ounce of stamina have beaten the favourites and brought home the cup. When Bert Troutman joined Manchester City, 40,000 people protested in the streets of Manchester against him. When he left the club, 60,000 people came out to say farewell to a legend. It was a very, very emotional night. Um, I mean, the amount of talent on display was unbelievable. I mean, Matthews and Law, uh, Tom Finney, there were some amazing players. Uh, but it was all about emotion. And I think it's probably the, the last time that, that City and United fans were actually stood together and actually uh, were, were comrades, if, if you like. Um, there was such a great feeling for the man. Um, and it was, it was just emotion. Um, and everyone dreading the end of the match. Uh, this, this, uh, and people just wanted to spill onto the pitch at the end and just uh, engulf him, which of course they did. It really was the end of an, an era. You know, you asked me about playing at Wembley, Football of the Year and so on, and I forgot all about the testimony much. But there is something, you know, I cried. 
I know I said a few words, but you know, I, with a thick throat. This is why I am, even born a German, I'm totally British or English. In 2003, the Troutman Foundation was set up to build bridges between England and Germany. The foundation uses football to help bring the two nations closer together from a young age. There's still a lot of interest amongst Germans to go to Britain to learn English. There's less interest amongst British people to come to Germany. And uh, you know, that's a, a field for stereotypes. And, and anything that brings young kids together, like this foundation through football, I think is to be encouraged. It's doing a fantastic job. We are interested, as a foundation, to bring the two people together, Germany and England. There should be more respect, more understanding for each other for different nationalities. Of course, you can't encumber the, the whole world, you know, it's an impossibility, but to your neighbors, be respectful, be friendly. After a hugely successful start for the Troutman Foundation, Bert was invited to meet Queen Elizabeth, where he was presented with an OBE for his continuing dedication to improving Anglo-German relations. I'm proud and I'm very honored to having received this medal from the Majesty. We were all prisoners of war, irrespective of what background we come from. We're all the same. And for one of you, one of us, to achieve what he did, you got to be proud of. The Bert Troutman legacy will stay around long after the man himself. His fans, friends and family will always remember the great passion and dedication that one man has shown to help bring two nationalities closer together. <laughs>